In this video, we're going to explain why we use debits and credits. Now, in most accounting classes, they teach debits and credits through memorization. So you memorize all your different types of journal entries. And this is great because you have to memorize those journal entries. Um, but what I think is important to get is to understand the concept of why we use debits and credits in the first place, because it is very, very important. So let's start by looking at the balance sheet. And in a balance sheet, you have two sides. On one side, you have your assets, and on the other side, you have your liabilities and your owner's equity. And this follows the famous balance sheet equation we all know and love, <laughs> assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. And so what you have is you have this balance sheet that always balances. One side always equals the other side. Your assets always equals your liabilities plus owner's equity. And in a general sense, this is why we do journal entries the way we do, because uh, your journal entries will always balance. Your debit side will always equal your credit side, and this flows back to your balance sheet where one side always equals the other. But there's a little bit more to it than that. So <laughs> let's dive into the balance sheet and see what's really going on. Let's look at the asset side on your balance sheet. Your assets stand for all of the property your business owns, so all the stuff in your company. Um, so things like cash, things like inventory, things like equipment and buildings, all of the stuff in your company shows up on the asset side of your balance sheet. Now, I think it's pretty common sense that you would want to track these type of items. Um, so it's pretty easy for most people to understand. You want to be able to track the assets in your business. So when your cash account goes up and down, you track that. You track when your inventory goes up and down. This is all stuff that you track and you see it on your balance sheet. But accountants go a step further than that. They not only track their assets, they track liabilities and owner's equity, which is the other side of the balance sheet. And li what liabilities and owner's equity stand for is it stands for the claims against the company assets. So on one side you have the assets, and on the other side you have the claims against those assets. And that's why we have the equation assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So let's take a little bit closer look at liabilities and owner's equity. Um, liabilities, you could have short-term, you can have long-term liabilities. Um, a short-term liability might be something you owe to a supplier, like an accounts payable. So you might have bought some inventory and you still have to pay that supplier. Well, that supplier has a claim against a certain dollar amount of your assets and it shows up on your balance sheet. Let's look at a long-term liability, like a bank loan. You might have a notes payable on your balance sheet. And this is a dollar amount that the bank has a claim against some of your assets. And finally, you have accounts and owner's equity, like retained earnings and additional paid in capital. And so this represents amounts that the owners have claims against the assets in the business. So what the balance sheet is saying is it's saying these are the assets in the company, and this is who has claims against those assets. And that's why it's always going to balance. It's always exactly the same. You only have so many assets and you have only have so many claims against those assets and they're gonna equal out. So let's look at the big picture. What is the big picture of what's going on? When you first set up a company, you have a business entity, right? You have this business entity that's, that's empty. Right? And you fill this business entity up with assets. You have multiple parties that come along and put assets into the business. So you'll have suppliers, you'll have banks, you'll have investors, and all these people, they put assets into the business. But what you have to do is you have to have some way of tracking who has claims against those assets because you have multiple parties out here and they want to know 
um, how, how they're connected to the assets in the business. And that is the whole point of double entry bookkeeping. That is why we do journal entries with both debits and credits that always equal out because we're always tracking two things. We're tracking the assets in the business and then we're tracking who has claims against those assets. That is double entry bookkeeping. If we did single entry bookkeeping, what that would be would be is if we just track the assets. If we just track the assets in the business, forget who has claims to it, we would always be able to tell how much cash we have or how much a property we have, but we would have no way of knowing who has claims against those assets. And that makes it very difficult to operate a business. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to go through a couple of journal entries and kind of talk through how this uh, whole concept works. So let's start with an easy one. Let's talk, start with purchasing inventory. So in purchasing inventory, um, we're going to debit inventory and credit accounts payable. And so we see that this concept play out in this journal entry. Debiting inventory uh, increases the assets on the asset side of the balance sheet. Crediting accounts payable increases the accounts payable on the liability side of the balance sheet. So we're increasing an asset and we're increasing a liability, which is a claim against our assets. So it all plays out in how the debits and credits work in the journal entry. Now, <laughs> this all gets more complicated, so hang on. Um, the famous equation we all know is not the complete equation. So we all know asset equals liability plus owner's equity. But what it really is, is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity plus revenue minus expenses. Because what happens is when your business is operating, you're always either generating a profit or generating a loss. Because day -to -day, in day-to-day -day operations, you're making sales, you're purchasing things. So, you know, every day of your operations, you're impacting not only your level of assets, but who has claims to your assets. And that flows through this equation into your trial balance, which eventually becomes your balance sheet. So it's really important to understand this full equation. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity plus revenue minus expenses. And that flows into your debits and credits and how you write your journal entries. So let's look at another journal entry. Let's look at um, if you were to pay a contractor with cash. So in this example, you would debit maintenance expense and you would credit cash. So debiting maintenance expense is increasing your expense, which affects the claims, the ownership claims against your assets. And you're going to credit cash, which will decrease your cash. Um, do you see how that works? Um, let's move on to another journal entry, and this journal entry is you're going to take out a bank loan. So when you take out a bank loan, you're going to get a large sum of cash, and you're going to owe something to the bank. So you do the general, journal entry, you're going to debit cash, and you're going to credit notes payable. So your cash, your asset, is going to increase with the debit, and your notes payable, your liability, is going to increase as well which is your claim against those assets. So you get a whole uh, lot of cash with the bank loan, but you also increase your debt. You're going to owe a lot to the bank. Now, let's talk about making a sale. When you make a sale, the journal entry you make is you debit accounts receivable and you credit revenue. So when you debit accounts receivable, your asset, that's an asset, that's going to increase and your revenue, which, is a, uh, which you're crediting, that's going to increase. And that's going to increase owner's equity in the company by increasing revenue. Finally, I want to end with a journal entry where you purchase equipment with cash. So in this journal entry, you're going to debit equipment and you're going to credit cash. So you debit equipment, which is an asset, that increases. And you're going to credit cash, which is another asset, and that decreases. Now, 
Uh, what I want to show in this journal entry is that both of these accounts are on the asset side of your balance sheet. So your assets increase and your assets decrease. So overall, there is a net zero effect. So <laughs> there's no change, overall, there's no change to your assets or the claims against your assets, but debits and credits always equal out. So I hope you enjoyed this discussion of debits and credits and why it's so important. Um, if you have trouble with journal entries or trouble remembering your debits and credits, uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what journal entry you have trouble with. Um, also, if you like this video, please subscribe. Um, I release a new video every week on accounting and corporate finance, so definitely come back and check out next week's video.